Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at some of the changes that are coming up in the Mac OS High Sierra release. Uh, with Mac OS High Sierra uh, being released here in the future pretty soon, I thought I'd walk through some of the changes. Now, this is more of a refinement of Sierra as opposed to major changes. So what you're going to see is some tweaks and things like that in this uh, short series that I'm going to do. But I wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that you can look for in some of the changes. So more specifically today, we're going to take a look at some of the changes in Safari, in Notes, and in Mail. So let's take a look at Safari first. So I'm just going to pull up a Safari web browser here. And so Safari is uh, optimized to be a lot quicker than it was before. And so that's a good addition that's been put in here. Uh, but one of the great things is the ability to uh, do some website specific changes. So let me just, uh, for instance, let's just go here on uh, Wikipedia. We'll start with that. And so what I can do is if I just come up here under Safari, you'll notice that I've got a settings for this website uh, item right here. And what that does is it gives me this little drop down and I can choose on a per website basis what I want to do. I can set this to use reader version when available. And what that does, if I just uh, go ahead and click that, I'm going to click that and then click off it. And we'll come in here and we'll look at an article. And you can see that it brings up this reader version so that we can look at the website this way. If I just click off of it, I'm back to the full website, but I can click back on and I get the reader version. So I can have it do that by default if I want to. And again, I can do it on a per website basis, which is nice. If I've got, if I'm coming to Wikipedia and I prefer to read it this way, I can set it up to have it work that way every time I come in. Uh, the other thing that I can do if I uh, come on here and just double click or uh, right click on the website, I can just get to the settings for website again from right here. I can enable content blockers if I want to do that. And I can set a page zoom for different pages. So let's assume that there are some pages. This text is a little smaller. Let's say I want to have it blown up. Uh, I can set it to 125% or whatever I want. And then every time I come to this page, it will come in at that zoom. So it won't do it on other pages, but it'll just do it on this particular page. I also have uh, the option to stop autoplay. Uh, I can stop media with sound. I can allow all autoplay or I can never uh, autoplay. Uh, depending on what it is on the website. So I can do that again per website. So if you got those websites that are annoying uh, because they have these ads that play automatically when you come on the website, you can set this feature right here and it won't play that. It'll, it'll stop those things for you. Now, the other thing I can do is for cameras. I can uh, have the website ask whether I want to use the camera, uh, deny it or allow it uh, whenever I have the camera or access to the microphone uh, right here. And I can do the same for location. I can either deny, ask, or allow. And so that way, if I'm really concerned about certain websites, uh, you know, coming in and, and uh, playing with my camera or microphone or location or any of that information, I can come in here and make that setting happen. So let me just show you another thing in Safari. Uh, if I go to Preferences for Safari up here, you'll notice I've got this new Websites tab right here. And what I can do is do settings on a per website basis in here. And this is where I can fine tune it. So some of the items that I saw in the drop down, I can come in here and check it out. So for Reader, I can say whether I want to have the Reader version on or off. And I can do that by different websites and have that configured. Uh, I can say when visiting other websites, I can turn it off or on. And that's more of a global feature to turn on the Reader version. I can work with content blockers if I have those installed. Uh, I can work with autoplay on a website basis. Again, here's the page zoom. And so all of those features that I showed you in those drop downs show up right over here where I can come back in and customize them and tweak them if I want to do that. So again, some really nice uh, changes to Safari. And those are just a couple of uh, really a few nice refinements that are set up here. And uh, again, in addition to the speed stuff. So that is the Safari changes. So now let's take a look at the uh, changes to notes. So I'm just going to pull up the notes application. And so I get this nice uh, start up uh, area here. I'm just going to say continue. And so here we are inside of notes. And so I can start typing my notes. You know, this is a note and just do that and start typing in here. And I've got a couple things that I can add in here. You'll notice up at the top here, uh, I've got this uh, table area here. And I can set up a table if I want to do that. So I can set up a table and, and say, um, you know, uh, characters, let's see, let's say, and then uh, scene, you know, and I can kind of go through and, and say, you know, make things up, Mike, and uh, I can say outside. 
and uh, just go through and do my tables however I want to do them in here. Um, and so I've got that. Now when I come into the table, I can do uh, things like move the tables around. I can separate the distance if I want to do that from here. If I just uh, click on uh, these ellipses here, I get uh, add column before, add column after, or delete column. I can do the same thing on this side, add a row above, add a row below, delete row. And I can uh, you know, grab this and move it around too and put it in whatever order I want. So we did get tables in here, which is, uh, again, just a, a nice addition to uh, notes. Now another thing I can do here in notes is if I just uh, slide to the left, I got this new pin feature. And so I can pin this particular note to the top and you can see that it's pinned up there. And I can go and pin subsequent ones that will move it up in front of the next one and that sort of thing and just kind of go through and, and pin these notes where I want them. Uh, if I want to uh, undo a pin, I just uh, slide over and you can see how it has the minus through the pin. I can do that and that takes the pin off and you can see now I have the option to pin it again. We had this one, I can do the same thing there, take the pin off and then everything is back the way that it was before. If I slide to the left, I get this access now to lock individual notes. Uh, I could do that before, but now it is a swipe feature that I can add in there uh, to go ahead and do the uh, individual uh, locking of particular notes. Now another thing that has improved in notes uh, is the ability to search. And so I can search within a note and have it actually highlight the text. So if I just come in here and I say uh, bird, for instance, you can see now what it does is it highlights the word bird and shows me that it's there. If I say run, you can see now I've got two notes that have run and you can see it highlights it there for me. So again, just some little tweaks, nothing uh, super major, but, uh, but again, those are just nice little uh, changes and features that have been added to the Notes app. Okay, one more change that I want to show you, and again, it's just one change to this application, but it's one of the annoyances that I've always had with Mail is the fact that uh, when you compose it, it sort of blocks everything that's in the mail application itself. So you have to usually minimize it or get out of what you're composing, especially if you're in full screen, to be able to see what's happening on the other side. And so again, this is really comes up when you're in full screen. So let me just pull up mail uh, for a minute here. So here's, here's my mail application, and I'm just gonna go into full screen here. And you can see here I am in full screen and I can look at my mail and everything's fine. And let's just say I need to uh, compose an email message. So as soon as I hit compose here, what you'll notice is I get this slide out. And so now I've got a split screen where I can compose my email over here, but I can still see what's going on on the side. So that if I wanted to uh, you know, access a, a previous email that I wanted to look at over here as I'm writing my email, I can do that and, and uh, basically reply to it. And I can even copy text and bring it over so that I can compose the message the way I want. Uh, so for instance, let's say I'm looking at this email here and I'm looking and I'm going to reply to this uh, individual. I can do that. You know, I can, I can come over here and copy text and come back over here and paste that text and basically work right across here. If I forgot the email for some reason or I wasn't doing a reply, I can come in and copy the email if I want to do that and add it back over here. And that way I can track this way. Again, it's a small thing that's done to mail, but it's one of those refinements that uh, it was such an annoyance previously that it really helps to have this on here now to take care of that issue. So that gives you an idea of some of the changes. Like I said, in High Sierra, it's going to be a lot of refinement. It's not going to be a lot of uh, you know groundbreaking uh, changes in the OS. But at its base level, there's a lot of these neat little things that have been added and tweaked and, uh, and pushed forward to really make the experience of Mac OS that much better. So that's all I have for this week. Again, I'll come back next time. I'm going to show you some other changes, uh, especially we're going to talk a little bit about getting prepared for the Apple uh, the new Apple file system, uh, which is a change. There's a lot of great things that the file system can do. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about the things you need to do to prepare for it and what you can expect when you uh, take a look at that file system. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.